Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Quality Measurement and Improvement. This is Lecture A. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings. It discusses how care is organized within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for quality measurement and improvement are to define healthcare quality and the major types of quality measures, structural, process, and outcome measures. Describe the current state of healthcare quality in the United States. Discuss quality measures used in various healthcare settings in the United States, including those required for the High Tech or Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act Meaningful Use Program. Describe the role of information technology in measuring and improving healthcare quality, and describe the results of current healthcare quality efforts in the United States. This lecture discusses the definition and framework for assessing healthcare quality. It's important to define terms and look at how to operationalize them. What exactly is healthcare quality? Although there are a number of definitions, one of the thought leaders in healthcare quality, Avidis Donabadian, stated in a 1988 article on healthcare quality that it's that kind of care that's expected to maximize an inclusive measure of patient welfare after one has taken account the balance of expected gains and losses that attend the process of care in all its parts. Another definition was put forth by Lohr, who was the lead author on an Institute of Medicine report published in 1990. He defined quality as the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired outcomes and are consistent with current professional knowledge. These definitions and others were reviewed by Blumenthal in 1996. The current century is an era of rising costs and rising concerns about the quality of care that is delivered. There is a growing recognition that physicians must have some amount of public accountability. This impression is highlighted with the movement toward value-based payment models in which reimbursement is based on positive patient outcomes. ORC International conducted a study, the 2014 State of Value-Based Reimbursement, which involved 464 payers and hospitals. The study identified that in this changing payment landscape, more than two-thirds of payments are expected to be based on value measurement in five years. The 2016 HIMS Cost Accounting Survey examines the approach healthcare care providers are pursuing as they manage this changing landscape. The findings revealed the following. 45% of providers represented are participating in some form of alternative payment model. 3% believe their organization is highly prepared to make the transition from fee-for-service to a value-based payment system. The top three needs participants identified for the successful transition to a value-based payment system are, quote, tools to track and evaluate quality of care, better communication between disparate providers, and consistent definition of quality by specific type of disease, end quote. Yet it's not clear that anyone knows all the right things to do when it comes to improving quality. Many resources investigate practices focused on care coordination across the patient care continuum and demonstrate positive patient outcomes. One resource is the National Quality Forum Consensus Report, Preferred Practices and Performance Measures for Measuring and Reporting Care Coordination. Donabadian developed a model of quality with three categories of quality measures. The first category is structural measures, which are factors that make it easier or harder to deliver high-quality care. Structural measures are factors such as hospital location, patient volume, whether the hospital is associated with a teaching institution, and so forth. The second category is process measures. These are factors that describe healthcare content and activities, such as how much screening is done and the degree of adherence to established practice guidelines. Finally, there are outcome measures, which are changes attributable to care, such as the mortality rate, morbidity, and functional status. These factors are implemented and measured at different levels within an institution, such as the individual practitioner level the department level, and the organization as a whole. 
On this slide is a table that includes the types of quality measures and the levels at which quality is measured, individual, department, organization, across the columns. Some of the structural measures are whether individuals are professionally certified, whether departments have appropriate staffing, and whether an organization has various licensures. Process measures are things like performance evaluation of individuals, monitoring of their productivity, and reviewing factors, such as their performance indicators at the department level, how much screening they have done, and their stated adherence to guidelines. Outcomes measure results. Do patients do better on the basis of the care they receive? Do they achieve better health? It's important to measure things like practice profiles of individuals' errors at departmental levels and mortality rates and quality sanctions at organizational levels. In looking at process versus outcomes, many quality measures are actually measuring process, or how care was provided. But the goal is to measure outcomes, how patients respond to care, how their health improves, or how their safety is increased. Outcomes represent what actually happens to the patient. However, outcomes can be difficult to measure and also have confounding factors. The patient may receive the highest quality process care, but for some reason, unrelated to that care, the patient has a bad outcome. Is there a relationship between process and outcome? In some areas, such as acute coronary syndrome, there's a strong correlation between the two the process measures that are undertaken, and the outcomes that result. But in other areas, the relationship is not as strong. In particular, it has become clear that patient satisfaction with care often does not have a correlation with the technical quality of that care. A 2006 study measured patient care based on a quality assessment system for vulnerable older patients against the perceptions those patients had of their care. The study determined that patients rated their care higher than the technical quality actually measured. The science behind the care also changes. For example, the clinical thinking about diabetes control has changed over the years. Some of these changes get incorporated into quality measures, but it may turn out that the science of care has changed, so the quality measures need to change. Sometimes there's no consensus on the best care. For example, there's a lot of interest, especially with regard to safety, about drugs that physicians should avoid prescribing to the elderly. But it turns out that it's difficult to achieve consensus on what those drugs are. So to assess quality, quality must be measured. Landon advocates that quality measures should be based on the best evidence for healthcare delivery. There should be agreed upon standards for satisfactory performance by clinicians. There should be standardized specifications so that clinicians know what to expect and so that performance can be compared across different departments or institutions. There should be an adequate sample size to achieve reliable estimates of the quality. There should be some mechanism to adjust for confounding patient factors, such as comorbidity, the number of coexisting illnesses, and socioeconomic status. There should be measures that can be attributed to individual physicians or other practitioners. It must be feasible to collect these measures, and the measures should be representative of the activities of the specialty. Perhaps not everything the specialty does, but a good representative sample of different things that physicians in a specific specialty do. Another point to remember about quality measures is that they have to consist of data. W. Edwards Deming, a famous statistician, said, In God we trust, all others bring data which means that all humans need to bring data to measure quality and act on it. Another adage from business management is that organizations cannot improve what they cannot measure. Another term discussed often in the context of quality is pay for performance, sometimes abbreviated as P for P. In fact, some people equate quality assessment with pay for performance, but it's important to remember that pay for performance is just one approach to measuring and acting on healthcare quality. The notion behind pay for performance is that healthcare providers and organizations should be held accountable financially for the quality of care. But of course, providers and organizations need to be held accountable in other ways as well. However, it's one way to bring about improvements in the quality of healthcare. Another term is value-based purchasing, which is really just an application of pay-for-performance. 
Value-based purchasing means that consumer decisions to purchase health care are based on quality, and they may decide to not purchase health care from a hospital or a physician or physician group. Employers have adopted value-based purchasing relatively slowly, even though employers use value-based purchasing in everything else. For example, car manufacturers look at the value of the steel that they purchase, and the food industry looks at the quality of the food. Yet, with the health care that employers provide to their employees, there's very little in the way of seeking value. Of course, part of the motivations for the health care quality movement is to change that. Another term gaining favor is accountable health care, which means that health care providers and organizations must be accountable to patients, purchasers of health care, and others. This also involves demonstrating positive patient outcomes across transitions of care. The term care transitions refers to, quote, the movement patients make between health care practitioners and various settings as their condition and care needs change during the course of a chronic or acute illness, end quote. Transitions of care are a set of actions designed to ensure coordination and continuity of the patient's care. Population health is also critical across populations of care. What is known about health care quality? There are various resources for quality studies and quality benchmarks in healthcare. Benchmarking is a management approach for implementing best practices at best cost, especially regarding quality activities. This slide lists a number of studies and reports that are reviewed in the following slides. For healthcare quality for the population at large, one of the most well known and widely cited studies came from McGlynn and colleagues in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. These researchers asked adults in 12 U.S. metropolitan areas to provide access to their medical records. About 7,000 adults agreed to do so, and their medical records were assessed for 30 common conditions. For each condition, the researchers used indicators of quality of care, the right actions that should be taken according to the best evidence. These were not esoteric actions, but rather tests and or treatments that are known to be the best approach for these given conditions. On average, only 54.9% of the care delivered was consistent with the best known quality, varying for different diseases. A number of other results have come from the McGlynn and related studies. One analysis found that differences between sociodemographic groups were much greater than within groups. It has also been found that from this and other data, the quality of care increases with the number of chronic conditions that patients have. A similar analysis to the McGlynn study, applied to patients in the Veterans Health Administration system, found that overall quality was higher than the national sample for process measures, though not for outcomes. In light of the distant past history of suboptimal care within the VA, its transformation has been called remarkable and is attributed in part to the VA's EHR, or Electronic Health Records, system. Other studies, such as that done by Schoen and colleagues with the Commonwealth Fund, have found that the quality of care for patients with chronic diseases is no better and in many ways is worse in the United States than in other developed countries. Their most recent national scorecard found that up to 84,000 fewer Americans would die prematurely from causes amenable to health care if the United States achieved the lower mortality rate of three other leading countries. The analysis also found that reducing insurance administrative costs to the level in other best countries would save $114 billion per year and that Medicare could save $4.2 billion per year by reducing hospitalizations for preventable conditions. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ, also puts out annual reports on healthcare quality and disparity that show that progress is being made but is still suboptimal. The quality reports allow viewing of measures by indicator or by state. Many organizations are working to improve patient care quality through various industry-wide efforts that provide public resources such as guidelines, topical case studies, and research studies for healthcare providers. A few examples are identified on this slide. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, 
Quality Improvement Organization, QIO, program is one of the largest federal programs dedicated to improving health quality at the community level. The program is focused on, quote, care coordination across all care settings to transform health care delivery for Medicare beneficiaries. The QIO program operates through a national network of QIOs across the U.S., which are independent, mostly nonprofit, private organizations staffed by healthcare professionals and quality improvement experts working to improve the quality and efficiency of healthcare across all care settings. End quote. The goal of the Healthcare Incentives Improvement Institute, or HCI3, is to improve healthcare quality and value with evidence based incentive programs. Guided by a board of directors that includes physicians, employers, and health plan representatives, the focus areas include health outcomes measurements, preventable care defects, and realignment of provider payment incentives around quality. This multi-employer effort supports the Bridges to Excellence activities. Quality Enhanced Research Initiative is aimed at improving the quality of health care for veterans by using research evidence to improve care and clinical practice. The National Committee for Quality Assurance, or the NCQA, is, quote, dedicated to improving health care quality. The NCQA seal is a widely recognized symbol of quality. Organizations incorporating the seal into marketing materials must first pass a rigorous comprehensive review and must annually report on their performance. For consumers and employers, the seal is a reliable indicator that an organization is well managed and delivers high quality care and service. End quote. The National Association for Healthcare Quality, or NAHQ, is a membership and certification organization of healthcare quality professionals working in all healthcare settings. NAHQ is the only organization to offer accreditation for certified professionals in healthcare quality, or CPHQ. The National Quality Forum, or NQF, fosters quality improvement in both public and private sectors. NQF endorsement is the gold standard for healthcare quality. This organization endorses measures that are evidence-based, valid, and in tandem with the delivery of care and payment reform. The Joint Commission's accreditation includes its Key Quality Measures Program of top performers, which recognizes accredited hospitals that attain excellence on accountability measure performance. Quote, the program is based on data reported about evidence-based clinical processes for certain conditions, including heart attack, heart failure, pneumonia, surgical care, children's asthma, inpatient psychiatric services, venous thromboembolism, stroke, perinatal care, immunization, tobacco treatment, and substance abuse. End quote. The Joint Commission monitors hospitals to ensure they achieve the required reporting standards. These are just a few of the organizations in the United States. There are many international organizations focused on quality as well. The National Quality Measures Clearinghouse, or NQMC, is a public resource for evidence-based quality measures and measure sets supported by AHRQ. CMS provides many tools on its website to assist providers with quality activities. These include a resource on the basics of clinical quality measures that is focused on assisting providers to measure and track the quality of health care services. Also, quality reporting resources are available for various medical specialties. This slide illustrates hospice and just a couple of the resources available that are specifically focused on quality reporting. What else do we know about health care quality? Let's look at health care providers. One way to look at healthcare quality is the measure of amenable mortality, which is mortality that could be prevented with timely and effective health care. Nolte and McKee have done a number of analyses, the last one published in 2008, looking at how many deaths could be avoided with timely and effective health care. This analysis excludes factors such as lifestyle and accidents and instead focuses on conditions under which death can be prevented with timely and effective health care. In 2008, the United States ranked last among 14 advanced countries that were part of this study of amenable mortality. Other studies have shown that physicians who score better on maintenance of certification exams 
have higher rates of quality based on process measures. It has also been found that use of hospitalists is associated with better performance on quality indicators in hospitals. In primary care, visit duration and a measure of patient connectedness are associated with quality. It has also been shown that patients who are underinsured, minority, have disabilities, and or are non-English speaking are associated with lower quality rankings for primary care physicians. Research about organizations also has illuminated the state of healthcare quality. For example, cardiac bypass surgeons who were trained at an organization associated with a best doctor rating did not result in lower adjusted mortality rates. Being a hospital on the U.S. News & World Report Best Hospitals list was associated with a lower 30-day mortality from acute MI, or myocardial infarction, but some best hospitals had worse mortality rates, and three times as many non-ranked hospitals had comparable low mortality. Other research found that organizations that have direct leadership, accountability for quality and safety, and a culture of collaboration have measurable differences in quality measures. Higher quality has also been seen in larger, that is, more integrated, subspecialty medical groups. CMS provides a consumer-oriented website, www.hospitalcompare.hhs.gov, that, quote, provides information on how well hospitals provide recommended care to their patients, end quote. This information can help consumers make informed decisions about health care. Hospital Compare allows consumers to select multiple hospitals and directly compare performance measure information related to heart attack, heart failure, pneumonia, surgery, and other conditions and procedures. These results are organized by patient survey results, timely and effective care, readmissions, complications, and deaths, use of medical imaging, linking quality to payment, and Medicare volume. Various states may also provide similar resources for provider comparisons. The Hospital Compare from the Hospital Quality Alliance and the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems also provide valuable information. In addition, many healthcare providers use a quality dashboard for internal management of their quality initiatives. Is there a relationship between healthcare expenditures and quality? Medicare data shows there's great variation in cost among patients but little relationship to quality. One study actually shows by state an inverse relationship between expenditures per capita and rank of quality. There's also no association between per capita expenses and patients' perceptions of quality or between spending and quality measures in annual NCQA reports. This concludes Lecture A of Quality Measurement and Improvement. In summary, health care quality is defined as the best possible delivery of care and its resulting outcomes. There are three major types of quality measures, structural, process, and outcome measures. The current state of health care quality in the United States shows that there are significant gaps between care as delivered and the best possible delivery.